What is happening? I was panicking, I was sweating, I was not having a fun time. <laughs> Hey friends and book babes, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be reading the Throne of Glass series. I recently just got it on Libby. I figured I would vlog it for you guys because I haven't done a reading vlog in a little bit on YouTube. I've done some on TikTok, but yeah, I just miss, I miss doing some reading vlogs with you guys. Is there some debate on the order, the reading order of the series? I found a reading guide. I'll put it on the screen somewhere. Um, it's just a random one I found on Pinterest, so I don't know. But it gives you the romantic style and the purist style for the orders of how to do things. And then it also gives you the list for if you want to tandem read Empire of Storms and Power of Dawn. I think I'm going to follow the romantic style for the list just because this one's more in the publishing order of it and I just feel like that's just the way to go with most things you know what I mean like it was published in that order for a reason so I'm gonna do that pretty excited and I really want to see how I'll feel if I like Akatar more than Silver Flames but <laughs> I'm really interested to see if I'll like Akatar more than Throne of Glass or not and I can't wait to see which series I prefer so Let's get into it. Hey guys. <laughs> it's the next day and I did a thing. So I read the first five chapters of Throne of Glass and I decided that I'm going to like it. So I bought the entire series. I don't do things like this usually, okay? Old covers were on sale. Like I got the whole box set. Eight books for less than $60 because they're the old covers. And like, are the new covers pretty? Yes. But for some reason, they're not pretty enough for me to want them more when a sale is happening for the old ones. You know what I mean? Look at that. Wow. This came super fast. I ordered it yesterday, like probably around this time. And it's already here. It showed up within like, like less than 24 hours actually. So, like, maybe, like, 23 or 22 hours <laughs> it showed up. So that's kind of crazy. Packaging is so is done so well, you know? And with the sale, I did some calculations. Each book was, like, $7, and they're new, you know? No regrets, truly. Unless I end up hating this series, then there will be some regret, but... <laughs> <sighs> hey, guys. It's been, like, five days since the last time I filmed anything, and I still have like 100 pages left of Throne of Glass. It's not that this is bad. It's just that I don't care. Like I quite literally don't care about anything that's happening. I don't care about the plot. Selena, first of all, the fact that her name is Selena and not just Selena pisses me off. <laughs> and I just, I don't care about her. I don't care about her. I don't care about the possible romance that's happening. I, I'm team Kale, but I don't think Kale is gonna be the winner, <laughs> I'm assuming. And I quite literally don't care about anything that's happening. I will read a chapter and I'll be like, mm, I kinda wanna go on TikTok. Mm, I kinda wanna go on YouTube. Mm, I kinda wanna do this, you know? So it's taken me so long to get through this book. It's not necessarily bad. I just, I just don't like it. <laughs> like, I just don't care. And I guess that's just how Sarah J. Mass's series go, maybe? I haven't read Crescent City, so I can't say for certain. But the first book in her series, it's a no for me. I finally finished it. Just for contents of how much I didn't care about what was happening, there is like a little bonus scene of... Dorian and Cal in the back and I didn't even read it and I love Cal I didn't even I don't even I don't even care I don't care I think I'm gonna give it 2.75 stars which sounds low and that's because it is <laughs> but it's not like that low like I was I'm just giving it half you know I'm giving it half of the perfect score I'm giving it a 50% because the plot, like there was, there was a plot, yay. There was somewhat of a romance. I simply just didn't have a connection with any of the characters. And so this is all based on like my feelings, you know? It's not based off of like the writing ability or anything like that. I just, I truly just didn't care, you know? 
And I can't wait to get to the part when I do care. I'm definitely going to keep reading for nothing else other than the fact that I own this series. So yeah. Next book is Crown of Midnight. So like, let's get into that. Okay. It's kind of crazy. I'm only like 20 pages into Crown of Midnight, but I am enjoying this one a lot more. But I also felt that way about the first book. I was really intrigued in the beginning, which is what made me buy the series. And the more I read, the less interested I got. So fingers crossed for this one at least though. I've read enough books to know that Sarah most likely is going to write Cal to do something that will make us side with Dorian more because I can only assume that she wants us to choose Dorian so she's gonna write Cal as a reason to not have him be the one you want you know if that makes any sense but who knows looks like I'm in the jungle <laughs> all these leaves just everywhere <laughs> where am I we finally got to the other name I associate this series with. But that name and Dorian are literally all I associated this series with. Because that's all I knew. And that the main character was probably an assassin. But because this name is all I knew, I assumed she was the main character, not Selena. So that's interesting, I guess. So... Hopefully, I'm more intrigued soon. So the drama happening in part two, like the sad thing that just happened, the drama that's getting added to it and like the blame that's being put on certain characters just isn't doing it for me. Person, in my opinion, did nothing wrong. Do better, you know? <laughs> like literally. Try to assassinate her in her sleep or something. You know, like, I, <laughs> like honestly. I wish there was more Elena. I like Elena, but she's literally like, if you know, you know. <laughs> but, so like, there's no point in me wanting to see more Elena, but she's what I want. She's what I want. And that other girl that has been mentioned, uh, Al Alina, I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce it. I want to see, I want to see her, you know, that's who I want to see. I don't know. This whole video is just going to be me being like, mm, <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really care for it this that much. <laughs> I'm so annoying. We finished Crown of Midnight, guys. And the last like 50 pages were great, I have to say. I'm really excited now. Um, I did guess a lot of what was happening. I think around chapter 48 is when i guessed what the big reveal like kind of like the end the last page of the book reveal was that's when i guessed it so it took me a second but i did figure it out okay i did um the betrayer i think gets revealed in like 48 also and so i guessed who i guessed who that was i think maybe like a hundred pages beforehand so i did guess the twist i did guess certain things but i was a lot more intrigued by the end of this book and so i'm even more excited to start air of fire even though i love romance implication that the next book might not have any romance happening makes me want to read it even more like i'm even more excited <laughs> because i don't know what it is but the like the romances so far have not been hitting like i love cal with my whole heart and soul but also if he died i wouldn't care that much <laughs> i don't care if fleetfoot died that's the only one <laughs> and that's literally a dog so there's that so final thoughts for this one i think i will give it three stars mainly because i really liked the ending of it um but most the majority of it i didn't really care it was really falling flat for me. The reading order I'm following would say that I should read Air of Fire next, but I think I'm actually going to go into The Assassin's Blade. This is the next thing that was published, and I want to go in publication order. I'm going to go ahead and start this one, get through that one real quick, because I'm really interested in Air of Fire now. But yeah, I'm excited to see like what her life was like before. So 
that'll be fun it is a very very gloomy and rainy day today so it is all the reading vibes so honestly this may be me being an overachiever but i would love to get to like at least half of this book today um it's literally like midnight and i just now started reading so safe to say my goal of reading like half of this book isn't gonna happen <laughs> assassin's blade is now complete i actually really enjoyed this one i wasn't expecting to like it as much as i did i thought i was going to just kind of like try and get through it as quick as possible so i could get to the next book type of thing but i was pleasantly surprised i really enjoyed it and i can also see why there's so much like back and forth with which book you should start with first if you should start with the prequel or throne of glass first uh, if you want to get the feels and stuff i say read this one after the first two but if you really just want that chronological order and stuff then start with this one um because i feel like either way like there's not really a bad order i'd say like you're still gonna get what you need either way i think so you can't really do wrong with whichever order you decide to do um just keep in mind like what you really want you know I i'd say i give this 3.5 stars even though i really did like it it wasn't like uh, anything spectacular to me i just really liked the like figuring out certain things that were mentioned in the other books like the uh how to kill a witch like reference and stuff like that and honestly i really do want to see more of ansel but i hope she shows up in the other books I'm not gonna lie good but not great i guess so yeah now i now we're finally getting to the good and matching i think this book has rowan in it a lot of people be talking about rowan so i'm ready you know I am currently on page 200 now, um, just started chapter 25. I'm enjoying this one a lot more. The rumors are true, okay? The thicker the book gets, the better it is. Probably, this is the first time I'm like really enjoying it and it's not the prequel. <laughs> so that's good. The critique I do have though is I really don't like how many POVs we are getting in this book. Like, I do not need to know everybody's thoughts and opinions okay um truly the only person i feel that way towards though is manon if that's how you say it i don't really care about her opinion i know that she's going to probably be really prevalent to the story and everything and that is probably important that we have her pov and everything but i genuinely i just i don't want it <laughs> when i get to her povs i'm kind of just skimming for the most part i'm really liking adian which i wasn't expecting since most people talk about rowan which i do like rowan but the way people talk about him i was assuming that it would give like a reese from akatar vibes because with reese the second that man showed up i didn't even know his name but i knew like in my soul <laughs> that that was reese I went feral for him you know but with rowan i'm kind of just like i think it's the anxiety okay <laughs> so i have some anxiety with selena and rowan because since people love rowan i just kind of assumed that he was the love interest for selena um just to find out that they're distantly related it's the distantly for me that's getting me because now i'm anxious over the idea that something is still gonna happen because they're so distant that they're basically not even related like why why put that in there you know like this is a book <laughs> you could have just not made them related you know what i mean so now i think it's just the overall anxiety i'm having right now because i initially thought that he was the love interest and he might not be at all you know but since i went in thinking he was and now knowing that he's technically a relative now I'm just scared. <laughs> now I'm scared that what I thought would happen is gonna happen, you know? So hopefully that's not true. <laughs> I do love Rowan because of all the ways he be humbling Selena. You know, I'm here for it. <laughs> My baby Rowan. I just got his backstory. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have my mouth guard in, just so y'all know. But oh my gosh. 
Okay, I know I said I really don't care for Manon, Manon, whatever, her point of view, but chapter 38, she kind of slayed. She kind of slayed really hard to where, like, now I care about her POV. Like, now give me her POV all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, tell me why this conversation <laughs> in the beginning of chapter 40 between a certain two people is literally just reminding me of that scene in the Vampire Diaries in like season four between Stefan and Damon when Damon's like, like, are you getting her this cure because you love her or because you don't want her this way or something and then Stefan's like well I'll always love her but she's not supposed to be like this I don't want her to be and then Damon's like just so you know I'm good I'm fine with her either way brother that's what that scene that scene is reminding me of that conversation <laughs> in chapter 40 <laughs> some good points that I didn't really like even stop to think about you know so now I'm like, dang, I don't know about you. <laughs> I love Adian, but honestly, I don't care for his POV, to be honest with you. I really don't. I don't care about his POV. I don't want it. I don't care. <laughs> On chapter 41, um, so I have like 200 pages left. I don't want, I'm not going to spoil anything that's about the plot or anything like that, but I am going to spoil but kind of a relational plot that most likely is endgame but i don't really know because i didn't google that part so if you don't want spoilers for that skip to this time um so yeah go do that i'll give you one final chance okay so i googled <laughs> the tension was just tensioning too much so i had to google if selena and Rowan end up together but uh, my google said do they kiss in air of fire and so I was like okay I'll click on that instead and <clears throat> I said they did <laughs> so I'm gonna assume their end game because this romance if they weren't related would be a lot more just mm, you know and so yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to get over it as best as I can because they're literally like 15th cousin. So like they're basically not cousins, but that's what pisses me off because like this is a book, Sarah, you very easily could have just not made them related, you know, and then there wouldn't be anything weird going on. You know what I mean? I think right now they just decided to like help each other out with their like brokenness or whatever. And I was like, oh that's cute but also you know and it's just like I want to be able to just be feral for them without getting like grossed out you know and I get it they're like 15th cousin so it's like ba not even a thing but my brain just can't get over it <laughs> so yeah the other thing is that <laughs> maybe Maeve, whatever her name is. Um, <laughs> she's the one that made it a big deal to me, in my opinion. Cause she's the one that told Selena that they're related. And she was like, oh, y'all are so distant that it basically doesn't even matter type of thing. And that's when the red flags, the red flags were, were popping up in my brain. And I was like, what y'all trying to do, Sarah? What are you trying to do with that? What do you mean? What do you mean? You know, because like at this point, I would have rather... I would have rather um, maybe had not said anything about them being related and the fandom just figuring it out based on the family tree. <laughs> like, that's what I would have preferred than this because I probably never would have figured it out because I wouldn't have paid attention enough to realize that, you know? But I wish that my brain would just forget it <laughs> because I think the fandom collectively just, like, decides to forget that. And so I wish I was a part of that where I could just forget. But right now I'm still under the I can't. 
and that pisses me off because this this enemies to lovers it's enemies to lover ring <laughs> pretty hard for me but i can't enjoy it because they're freaking related <laughs> Ugh. i think we're right now we're gonna just fake it till we make it you know i'm gonna start shipping them in hopes that i truly will ship them you know <laughs> If that makes any sense. Take it till you make it, you know? So, that's what we're gonna just do. And I think I'm just gonna ride the fact that they are royalty and people in royal situations, they just be marrying their cousins, you know? Keep the bloodline pure or whatever. So, I'm just gonna be like, you know what? This is the culture. <laughs> so, well, I don't know. We'll have to figure this out because this might be a real issue <laughs> for me. I think I went through the five stages of grief <laughs> because now I'm okay with it. Not like, not like I'll go feral for them because I'm still a little bit creeped out. But someone on TikTok said that pretty much uh, like all the Fae are related in some form or fashion, you know? And so I'm just going to take it in the route of like how all of us in the world, like we're technically, like technically we're all related, you know, we all came from like Adam and Eve, you know what I mean? So I'm going to take it from like that route. <laughs> I'm going to be like, you know what? There is like a thousand year difference between them. <laughs> I spoiled for myself what I was anxious about and I'm running with it it's so cute <laughs> chapter 42 so cute see this is what I needed I needed I'm glad I spoiled it for myself to be honest with you because if I didn't I would still be having anxiety over these moments you know but now that I know the ending of it it's like, okay, now that I'm caring and not anxious, <laughs> I'm really liking this a lot more now. So if you're like me, you might just want to ruin it for yourself. I don't know. If you skipped my spoiler, maybe rewind and go watch it. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you know? So yeah, I'm into it now. I don't even care. Whatever. I... I, I I processed, okay, for like a good two, three hours about what was going to happen. <laughs> and now it's, it is what it is. <laughs> so, oh my God, I literally want to cry right now. <laughs> Chapter 54. That was written so well. The way Sarah wrote the aspects of like survivor's guilt and just everything that this character is, has gone through and all the guilt she feels and all the sacrifices that have been made and she feels like she's not worthy of them like it's just written so well <laughs> that i want to cry about it <laughs> read this yet yeah, this was not the end this was not her end she had survived loss and pain and torture. She had survived slavery and hatred and despair. She would survive this too because hers was not a story of darkness. So she was not afraid of that crushing black, not with the warrior holding her, not with the courage that having one true friend offered a friend who made living not so awful. After all, not if she were with him. <laughs> This is so good. From the Akatar books, they're literally right there. Um, I liked Freya, but she wasn't like my favorite person ever. <laughs> like I definitely cared more about the Bat Boys, to be honest with you. And I was very intrigued with Nesta. I still haven't read Silver Flame, but I was really intrigued intrigued with Nesta's character. So I feel like I'll like Nesta more than I liked Freya, to be honest with you controversial probably i don't care um <laughs> but selena i love this girl okay i i'm obsessed i'm obsessed with her age 516 i'm pretty sure 
you could have helped all the friends, maybe, possibly. At least that's what I want. That's what I wanted, is for you to help all of them <laughs> with that. And I think you could have done it with that, maybe. Or at least asked first <laughs> before you just settled for what you did, which, I mean, it's still really good what you did, but, like, you, I think you could have asked for more. This might be crazy to say, but I might be liking the slow burn of this more than Akamov. That might be a wild thing to say, especially after all the anxiety. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm so scared. Oh, my God, I'm so scared. Oh, my God, I'm so scared. I'm starting chapter 64. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. I was expecting this to happen, but it better not happen. Oh gosh. <laughs> I have a seeking suspicion. I have two suspicions. Two suspects. Mm -hmm. You tell him. You tell him. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. gosh. You tell him. Why is this hitting me so hard? <laughs> oh my god, I didn't think I would react like this. <laughs> oh god, oh god. <laughs> if both of if this happens to both of my suspects, I don't think I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> no. Wait, what? Wait. Wait. Oh my god. What is happening? What are you doing? Oh my god. No, no. No. Don't do this to him. Fleetfoot. Girl, I forgot you were in here. I forgot this dog existed. I finished. Bro, I have a headache from crying so much. So before all those feelings that I was feeling, as you saw, um, was happening, I was thinking of giving this book a four star. Um, but now I'm thinking of 4.5. And the reason I'm thinking 4.5 and not five star is mainly because, like I've complained about since the beginning, the POVs like the amount of POVs are not necessary. I think I'm gonna settle with 4.5 stars because this book is really good. Um, the plot is great, the romance is a lot better, or the allude to romance, nothing really happened <laughs> in this book. So, but like the idea, <laughs> the implications are there. And so I'm liking the storyline of that a lot more in this one than the previous ones. I didn't expect myself to like feel that much for it as I did. So there's that. But yeah, I'm really excited for the next book. I see why you guys are saying that Era Fire is when it gets really good because oh my gosh, this was so good. Throne of Glass, the first one, I gave I think 2.75 and Crown of Midnight, I think I gave a solid three stars. So, for this one to jump to a 4.5, like, that's pretty insane, to be honest with you. But I'm, I'm starting to see why people say that this series is better than Akatar because Akatar did not make me cry, literally at all. I think I was on the verge of tears. I didn't shed a tear, like, actually. So, but, yeah. So, I'm really, I'm really glad. I was getting really worried that I wasn't going to like the series, but I'm really starting to like it. Literally went from like not caring about these characters and literally being like you could give the death trope and I wouldn't care to literally getting a headache from crying so much over them. <laughs> like it's kind of insane the progression that's happened. It's wild, you know, and I'm glad I have documentation of it, you know, so you can see that I am indeed this dramatic. And then the beginning of chapter 65, I read, I read it, <laughs> I was reading it and then I dropped the book. You see me like drop the book and just start like panicking and crying and being depressed when all I had to do was read the next sentence. <laughs> like this, once I read the next sentence, like 
it was okay but i was like freaking out bro um that was a premature cry for that one you know but what they end up doing to this specific character in page uh 552 i think i was like don't do this to them <laughs> like i didn't see that part coming you know and so this character just went through it in those two chapters and i wasn't really expecting some of it to happen i was panicking i was sweating i was not having a fun time <laughs> just really shocked that i cried because i'm not really a crier when it comes to books most of the time, I didn't expect Sarah to make me cry, but here I was. <laughs> I really enjoy uh, the friendship that Selena and Rowan have established in this book. It's really sweet and like, like it's like a pure friendship that I wasn't expecting. The moments that they have together when they become friends is just so freaking cute, you know? And... I just love it. I could read I could read them just being friends for the rest of my life, you know? All you gotta do, my my roommate told me to just forget, you know? So that's why I decided to do, is just forget. <laughs> so I think that's why no one has ever told me about the relation between them. It's because everyone just chooses to forget. And so this is me forgetting. <laughs> Welcome. I am a part of the club now. We have decided to forget. And now we love it. <laughs> How much I also love Kale and Dorian's friendship. Friendships that Sarah wrote in this series so far, at least, has been kind of the highlight of the series for me. Like how pure and genuine these friendships are between like Rowan and Selena. Um, between Dorian and Cal. It's just so good. Even the like side characters like Luca and the old man. <laughs> I forgot his name because they refer to him as like the old guy a lot. <laughs> so I don't remember his name, but Luca and the old guy. Um, their friendship. Like everyone's friendships are just so, they're just so good to me. I don't know. I really enjoy it. I would totally ship Dorian and Cal, not even gonna lie. But I do think it's important to like show how deep and pure friendships are also without it having to be uh, romantic, you know? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna end it here. This is gonna be part one um, since I read half of the series now officially and i'm also going to take a break from the series for a little bit but i should post part two in a few weeks so definitely subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when that happens and thank you guys so much for watching if you made it to the end of this video comment a fire emoji and follow me on all my socials and i will see you guys next time bye meet me on the street lights Meet me where the lights fade out Tell me what it feels like